I'm going to go to, uh, I want to say first that to be, able, to be able to understand the Word, the Bible, the Bible says that God had to send His Spirit. And it says in John, For He will not speak of Himself, but He will speak of Me. So the Spirit's job is here to reveal Jesus to you and me. And He will show you things to come. Wow. Amazing. The Holy Spirit's job is to empower you and me to be able to preach the gospel with authority, to be able to reveal who the Son, Jesus Christ, God the Father's Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, who He really is. By the power of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. That's what you was endued with power for. To be able to reveal Jesus Christ to others. Jesus, the Christ. Yeshua, which means salvation. To be able to reveal salvation to other people by the power, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, which will reveal the Old Covenant Scriptures to you and me about who Jesus is. Y'all ready? So let's see the power of the Holy Spirit in action. First place we saw the power of the Holy Spirit in action was, was Peter. They all begin to speak with other tongues in Acts chapter 2. And Peter stands up. Right? Men and brethren, these men are not drunk as ye suppose, seeing that they are uh, seeing that they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Peter, be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret the law with authority, yeah. right? right? Goes and brings them to Joel and says, This is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. To be empowered means to be able to interpret the law of Moses with authority. That's what the word tarry means, 2523 in the Greek. And I always give thanks to Charlene for revealing that to me. What was that again? It's the, the word go wait till you be in due with power. Go wait and tarry. The word tarry is kathizo. Kathizo. It's K-A-T-H-I-Z-O. It's in the Greek 2523. And it means to sit in the seat of Moses to be able to interpret the law with authority, with power. That's what it means to go tarry. See, they was under the instruction of Jesus Christ for three and a half years. And now, the Holy Spirit was going to reveal Jesus to them through all that they was taught and learned. So that's why Peter stands up with the power of the Holy Spirit. He now connects the dot of what happened. This is what Joel spoke about. So now, men and brethren, these men are not drunk as you suppose. See, and it's about the ninth hour, nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what the prophet Joel spoke of. Yes. Tarry, yes. T-A-R-R-Y. It's the only place in the New Testament it says it. And it's absolutely amazing. So, now, let's go and dig into, because this next thing I'm going to read to you is in Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 and 7. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring us to where I want to take you. Okay? So check this out. This is in Acts chapter uh, 6, in verse 5, it says, Acts 6, 5. Let's look at that. It says, um, and we can, I don't want to just, I could start in the beginning, but I just want to show you. Uh, verse 5 says, the statement found approval with the whole congregation. This is when they was uh, picking out the de to be deacon, Stephen and all the other ones, right? Yeah. And it, it found approval with the apostles and they laid hands on them. Now watch this. And the statement found approval with the whole congregation. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Right? So this man is full of faith, that's in Jesus Christ, and full of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Right? Yeah. 
to work as a deacon in the house of the Lord. So now, look what happens next. He don't get to be a deacon long. I mean, he's just chosen. Watch this. Watch what Stephen does. Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost and with power, is going to bring us back to the Old Covenant. Because that's what it's about. We're going to see the glory of God manifested in the face of Stephen. Wow. But he's going to reveal who Jesus is by going to the old. Listen to this. You're going to find something. We're going to, I'm going to take you to Exodus chapter 1. And we're going to open some stuff up and start showing you what things mean and how every little bitty connection points to Jesus Christ. It is absolutely mind-blowing. Watch this. It said in chapter 7, verse 1, The high priest said, All these things so, and he said, Hear me, brethren and fathers. This is Stephen. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. Who's the God of glory? Jesus. Wow. Jesus appeared to Abraham, remember? How did he appear to Abraham? Sitting in a tent with two angels. Kind of sounds like the Ark of the Covenant to me. Christ is the Ark and the two angels is right next to him. What? Did you say? Yeah. If we're going to reveal it, let's get into it and let's see him. Right? Man. That's one. I just gave you one. And he said, Hear me, brethren and fathers. The, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he had lived in Haran. And he said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. Just as a side note, you know what uh, Abraham's father was? He was an idol maker. Yeah. Yeah. He, of Nimrod. He made statues of Nimrod. What did you say? Yes. He said, leave your father, the idol maker. Right? But his father came with him. Seven years they stayed in Haran before he died, before he actually got back on the path and came into Israel and God appeared to him. What did you say? Yep. Then he left the land of the Chaldeans and set it in, settled in Haran. Verse 4. From there, after his... From there, after his father died, God had him move to the country in which you are now living. But he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot of ground. And yet, even when he had no child, he promised that he would give it to him as a possession. His descendants... Let's see what's going on here. Might be loose. I'm sorry, guys. Test and test. And to, I gotta get off of this. You touch it and bring the thing. Test, test. Well, there it is. Testing. Okay, there it is. That's good. But God spoke to, uh, to this effect, verse 6, that his descendants would be aliens in a foreign land and that they would be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. So Abraham already knew this before he's even got a son. Amazing. And whatever nation to which they would uh, will be in bondage, I myself will judge, said God. And after that, they will come out and serve me in this place. That's Jerusalem. And he gave him a covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and uh, circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob and the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs became jealous of Joseph and sold him into Egypt. Yet God was with him. And he rescued him from all his afflictions and granted him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and made him a governor, a governor over Egypt and all the household. All of this is going to be a picture of who Christ is. Every one of them there. Now a famine came over all of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction with it. And our fathers could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent his fathers there. He sent out our fathers there for the first time. And on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers. What did you say? Did Jesus reveal himself to his brothers when he first came? No. He will come in the fullness of his glory riding on a horse and they will receive him. 
It's been veiled to them. Why? Till the time of the Gentiles be complete. Right. Wow. You see? Everything is Jesus. Then Joseph sent word and invited Jacob and his brother and his father and all the relatives to come to him, 75 persons in all. And Jacob went down to Egypt there, and our fathers died. From there, they were removed to Shechem, which means between the shoulders. Remember, we did a study on that. And he laid the tomb which Abraham had purchased for the sum of money for his sons of, from the sons of Hamar and Shechem. Shechem means shoulder. Shoulder means to bear. Christ would bear the burden. Right? He was the burden bearer. The shoulders... Uh, the two mountains are, or anyway, I don't want to get off track. But as the time of the promise was approaching, which God had assured to Abraham, the people increased in multitude and in, in, uh, in multi multiplied in Egypt. Until there arose another king over Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. Now that was about, um, it was close to 200 years, so just so you'll know. So they was in Egypt for 430 years. The first king had died. They, Joseph was in power, and he had some people in power there. About 200 years had passed. A new pharaoh arose who knew not Joseph, because about 200 years had passed, and that's when they began to put him in slavery and bondage. So you know. It says, until there arose another king over Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. It was he who took uh, a shrewd advantage of our race and mistreated our father so that they would, uh, so that they would expose their infants and they would not survive. And you remember he said, he told the maidens, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, ones that help give birth, what they called? The midwives. The midwives, when, you, when, a, when a girl is born, let her live. But when a boy is born, throw him in a river. Wow, throw him in a river. Pharaoh commanded that the male child would be drowned in the river. The same judgment he pronounced on the male child became his very own judgment. He drowned in the Red Sea. Never thought about that, huh? Wow, we, we're gonna find we're gonna find Jesus. That's amazing stuff. Wait, let's go. You can get real interested in a little bit. It was at this time that Moses was born. Wow. And he was lovely in the sight of God. And he was nurtured for three months in his father's home. Wow. You know, it's amazing. That word lovely means beautiful. The law looks on the outward. Beautiful. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil opens your eyes to see what's on the outside. Ooh, that boy's good looking there. Mm -hmm. That girl's good looking there. Right? The law dealt with the outer man. That's why Moses represented the law and he was beautiful. But Jesus was uncomely to look upon. Represented the inner man. He wasn't good looking. Veiled in his mama's flesh. So he was not something to behold. He wasn't a Saul who stood head and shoulders above every man. He wasn't a looker. But what was beautiful was on the inside. That's what drew people to him. Yes. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented the law, the word of God, which opened the eyes to cause Adam and Eve to look upon one another. Their eyes were open. Oh, we naked. We need to get covered. The exposing of oneself, of what the flesh looks like. That's how we judge people. But God judges the inner man. And that's why Jesus was not a looker. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The law, the fig tree. Right? And the, the olive tree. Right? All gnarly looking. You ever seen an olive tree? Man, it's... Son... It's rough looking. They still got two of them left in Israel that's over 2,000 years old in the Garden of Gethsemane. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Still there. Sure. The witnesses. That means they have trees that was in that garden when Jesus was in there weeping. That'll be a testimony. The two trees. The two olive branches on side of Israel's sign, their, their emblem. These two olive trees, the Lord said in Revelation, are my two witnesses. Wow. Mm. Where was that? You can get crazy in a minute. 
<laughs> All right. And now, Stephen, remember what's going on. Stephen are talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Right. And he's, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is going to prove to them beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is who he says he is. That's what's happening. He's been brought before a trial. Don't worry about what you're going to say in that day, for I will give you the words in your mouth. Right. Yeah. I will bring them to your remembrance. Oh, well, yeah. in order to have a remembrance, you have to have a brint. Yeah. That means you have to spend time in His Word and put it in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you don't study for a test. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Bring what to your remembrance? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Amen. It says... In verse 19, And it was he who took a shrewd advantage of our race and mistreated our fathers, Pharaoh, so that they would ex uh, expose their infants and they would not survive. It was at this time that Moses was born. And he was beautiful and lovely in the sight of God. And he was natured, nurtured three months in his father's home. And after he had been set outside... Watch this. Pharaoh's daughter took him away and nurtured him as her own son. I'm going to tell you something right here. If you don't go back and read where Stephen is connecting right here, you're going to miss a ton of things. Moses was placed in an ark. The ark represented the ark of the covenant, the ark of God. Moses represented the law in, a, in an ark. What happened when the ark of the covenant was sent back from, uh, from the, the five lords of the Philistines and it came into uh, Kadesh Barnea and all the Israelis seen the ark on the ox cart being pulled with two oxen and they ran over there? 185,000! and remove the cover. The only thing that was in the ark was the law. Bam! Smote them all. Because when you remove the mercy seat, the only thing that's there is the law. Wait a second. Moses, the law, placed in an ark. And Pharaoh's daughter, servant of the daughter, goes in the bulrushal reeds and exposes the law. Opens it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You can't handle the law and not get burned. They took the baby out of the ark of bulrushes that was sealed both in and out, just like the ark of covenant. They drew out the law took it into their own house and judgment hit them. Right. Yeah. Moses and the law of the Ten Commandments. You think it's by coincidence there's ten plagues? What did you say? Guess what? Pharaoh's enemy was within. The enemy that Satan always does, the enemy always gets in. The enemy within, Judas, the enemy within, Lucifer, in with God, one of the angels, the enemy within. David's own son, Absalom, became his enemy of his own household. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all pointing. All pointing, which is going to Christ, the one who would bring judgment on this world, on the modern Pharaoh, in this world system. And the same curse that he pronounced on the firstborn sons is the way he died. Man, it is absolutely mind-blowing what I'm going to show you. Mm. Mind-blowing, man. I'm telling you. You guys are in for a new ride. Where was we at? 20, 28, 22. And after he, 
had been set outside, Pharaoh's daughter, he took him away and nurtured him in her own, as his, her own son. Moses was educated, was educated in all the learning of the Egyptians. And he was a man of power in words and in deeds. Now that is really, that confounds me there. He is a powerful man in words and in deeds. Well, hold on a second. He told Moses, he told God, I'm a, a slow tongue and I stutter. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. Remember we got into that study? Yeah. Why Moses had a stuttering problem? Right? Why he had a speech impediment? Oh, my Lord, son. Get the message. <laughs> wow. But when he was approaching the age of 40, that means death to the flesh, it entered in his mind to visit his brethren, the sons of Israel. So he knew who he was. Watch this. And when he saw one of them being treated unjustly, he defended him and took vengeance upon the oppressed by striking down the Egyptian. Right? 40 is a number of death to the flesh. Here we see this death. And he supposed that his brethren would understand, understood that God was granting them deliverance through him, but they did not understand. He already perceived himself to be the deliverer. Yeah. But Moses can't be done by his hand. Right? right? Not by the hand of Moses. On the following day, why? Because the law can't set you free. The law cannot set you free. It took the blood. It took the death of the firstborn to set the children of Israel free. Moses brought the law on him nine times in a row. And Pharaoh wouldn't turn him loose. But when he, the, the death of the firstborn died, go. Get out. We'll get into that. On the following day appeared to them as they were fighting together, and he tried to reconcile them in peace, saying, Men, uh, you are brethren. Why do you injure one another? But one who was injuring his neighbor pushed him out the way, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? You do not mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday, do you? The law kills, remember? At this remark, Moses fled and became an alien in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. And those two sons, that's Gershom and Eleazar. And we're going to get into that as well. Why does he have two sons? What their names mean? How does it apply to Christ? Wow. Even Zipporah, who he married, the Midian's the priest's wife, do you know that, that do you know that Zipporah mm -hmm. was a Midianite? Yeah. And the Midianites were from Father Abraham, that Abraham had a son through Keturah, and Keturah's son became the Midianites. And when Isaac was born, Keturah's son and the other sons were given a gift and sent away. Because they couldn't have an inheritance with Isaac, which is Yeshua, which is Jesus. And if we're going to laugh, we're going to laugh about that. We're going to be joyful, right? Because Isaac's name means laughter because Sarah had Isaac when she was 90. And Abraham was 90 and 9. Wow, 100 years old. Can you imagine being 80 years old and somebody come and tell you pregnant? I mean 90, I'm sorry. What? Are you crazy? That's right. That's what happened. It, it, you know what it does? It takes the hand. It takes the hand of man out of the equation and it puts the hand of God in it. And we know who wrote who the hand of God is. And every time the hand of God comes in, it's about His Son. It's always about His Son. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness. Wow, 40 again. So he's 40 years old. You see death to the flesh of the Egyptian. Now he's in the wilderness for 40 years. Stephen is making a connection, right? And he dies to himself now. Right, Moses? And now he's going to go do what it is that God wants him to do. That he's supposed to do. But not in his own strength. By the power of God's hand. It says, And after 40 years, an angel appeared unto him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in the flame of a burning uh, thorn bush. Wow. <laughs> a thorn bush. A burning bush. 
I mean, could that be Jesus? Was the thorns on His head? Is He the light? It says in Hebrews 10, the last verse, that our God is a consuming fire. Is He the olive tree? Is He the tree that's on fire? Is He the tree that has the thorns on His head that appeared to Moses in a bush and said, Take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on is holy. The same one that appeared to Joshua. Take off your shoes. That's right. For the ground you're standing on is holy. Hallelujah. Ah! Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost and power that God is talking about to be able to interpret the law with authority. Amen. I'll show you Jesus. I can't show you Muhammad. I can't show you Buddha. Because they ain't in a book. Right. I see Jesus. Amen. The Christ. I see God manifested in the flesh. I see through the veil. But the Lord said unto him, Take off your sandals. Remember Boaz? From your feet. For the place in which thou standing is holy. Ten commandments he received there. Oh, Boaz. Take off the shoe. He got the ten elders at the gate. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. And he says, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt and have heard their groans, and I have come down to rescue them. I have come down. Not Moses. Come now, and I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they disowned, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? Wow is the one whom God sent to be both a ruler and a deliverer with the help of the angel who appeared to him in the thorn bush. An angel appeared. An angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. The Lord. Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Well, you can't take off your shoes and bow before any angel. Because the angel will say, Get up, like in Revelations. For I'm just like you are, right? Right. You can't bow before an angel. The angel, he was kissing the floor. He seen and beheld the glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm. My Lord. <laughs> wow. Yes. When God began to reveal these things to me, I didn't learn this from man. I didn't go to school. I wasn't educated. Thank God. Yeah. But I learned by the Spirit, yeah. the educator, the helper, the Holy Ghost who taught me about Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know what? In all of my searchings in the Bible, I told the Lord this. And I want you to hear this. I told the Lord this. We get this picture of God the Father. We could see God the Father in, 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 in with Moses being a reflection and Joshua being Jesus and Elijah, God, Yahweh is God, and Elisha, the Father, Son, Father, Son. But where is the Spirit? Well, the Spirit didn't come to reveal Himself, but He's there. And God said He's a Him. It's a He. It's a man. And in all of my studies and reading, in, in the years that I've been searching in, in, through a Jewish perspective and reading, God, the Spirit, of, the Spirit never ever revealed Himself to me in a person. Not one time. He kept showing me Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I came to a point where I asked God the Father. I said, Lord, I see You. And I see, you know, your son. I see it in the face of, for God, for Moses shall be as a God unto the people, and Joshua shall be your minister. Wow! Minister! Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, same name. For you shall speak, for you shall be as a God. Moses shall be as a God unto the people, for I shall speak unto you, and you shall give them my word. That's why Moses had to be died and buried and put away. They had to took his bones and worshipped them. God knew it. That's why Satan disputed one of them in Jude. 
And I've seen Elijah and Elisha. Elisha's name, Elijah's name means Yahweh is God. Elisha's name means Yahweh is salvation. Elijah went to the same mountain that Moses did. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus fasted 40 days. Same. Same mountain. Mount Horeb. Mount Sinai. Same mountain. All a picture of God. Elisha, whose name means uh, Yeshua, which means Jesus. Picture of Jesus. Where is the Spirit? In the face of a man. It took me to it took me asking God the Father, Lord, show me and reveal to me your Holy Spirit in the person. And he showed me Abraham and Isaac, God the Father, and his son. And you're gonna think Jacob. Wrong. The head of Abraham's house was Eleazar. The head servant of Abraham's house, who was over all the servants, was told to go get a bride for Isaac. And he went bearing gifts. Wow. The Holy Spirit comes with gifts. Looking for a servant. Right? And when Rachel served, Rebecca, Re when Rebecca served at the well, not only him, but the camels as well, then he put rings on her fingers and in her ears and said, I found the bride for Jesus. And oh, by the way, do you know how old it was that, Jesus, that Isaac got married, who was a picture of Christ, who put the wood on his back and went on a three-day journey up to Mount Moriah where he was put on an altar and was going to be sacrificed, which was totally a picture of Jesus. Yes, we do. Well, in Genesis chapter 28, it says, And now when Isaac was 40 years old, Abraham sends Eleazar, the head servant of his house, whose name means helper, which the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8 is our helper. He sends him out to get a bride. And Isaac marries at 40 years old. Jesus' ministry lasted 33 and a half years, and you have seven years of tribulation. That would be 40 years old that Christ will get married at. Okay. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yes. What was the season? What? What was the season? Oh, it was, uh, it was in the spring feast. Oh, yeah, it was Passover time when Eleazar took a wife for Isaac. <laughs> yes, we'll get into that. Anyway, you guys, let's go. I haven't even got to where I want to get yet. It's crazy. What? But this, this is so. This is so you will under, have a better understanding of where I take you. Yeah. Because Stephen, through the power of the Holy Ghost, is interpreting the old covenant that it's Jesus. Let's keep going. This Moses was disowned, saying, "Who made you a ruler and a judge?" I've read that. Okay. Verse 37. Wait, no, on 36. Uh, let me go back to 35. Then Moses, who they disowned, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? Is the one whom God sent to be both a ruler and a deliverer with the help of the angel who appeared to him in the thorn bush. The angel of the Lord went with him. I'm going to ask you. Wow. You wanna, we're going to get... We'll go deep. What was... What was... Moses commanded to show Pharaoh to set the people free. What was he commanded? To show unto Pharaoh and his brethren when he went over there. What was he commanded to show them to set the people free? What was he commanded? What? The staff. Oh, that ain't all he was showed. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that? What was the second? 
He was commanded to show him. He casted his rod down to become a serpent. The next one was take your hand and bury it in your bosom. Yeah. Take it out. It became white as snow. That's leprosy. It was dead. He buried it again. I put it in his bosom. It came out and it resurrected alive again. And he took the water and poured it out. Water became blood. That was the three signs that was told to him so that they would believe him and they would be set free. Wow. Wait, hold on a second. You see, Pharaoh was only showed the serpent. Cast the rod down. And it became a serpent. Why? Because the serpent represents the law. The venomous. Because the venom was going to bite him. You see, he wasn't showed the hand and the blood because there was no deliverance for him. But his brethren were showed the serpent, the hand, and the blood. Why the hand? Huh? Where was Pharaoh? Pharaoh was in his Pharaoh's house. Really? Yes. Right. You see, deliverance was going to be set forth by Jesus said, you know, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And I must die and be resurrected again. And my blood is going to be poured out. The blood, the water, the blood of the new covenant was going to come forth. That was the three signs that was going to eventually set the children of Israel free from Pharaoh out of Egypt. And we look at the movie, oh, he just casted a rod down. Well, that rod that was cast down was Christ. The rod was in the ark. Aaron's rod. Aaron! Give me your rod! It was a Levite rod, the Levite lineage. Give me your rod! And he cast it down, and it became a serpent. But that's the very rod that God chose that brought forth the almond fruit and blossomed that was placed inside of the ark. Yes. The fruit of the Spirit. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in one earthen vessel. Wow. That was Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead in body. So, wow. verse 37 this is Moses whom said the sons of Israel God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren listen what he said he tells him let me go back to 36 this man led them out performing wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years right this is Moses who said to the sons of Israel, your fathers and my fathers. God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Moses signifying, it's, uh, uh, signifying it wasn't over. That deliverance was going to come through another. Moses testifying of Jesus Christ. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who was speaking to him on the Mount Sinai and who was with our fathers and received the, live, the, the living oracles uh, to pass on to you. Jesus was with them and that rock that did follow you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. <coughs> Jesus was in the wilderness with the church. The ecclesia, the called out ones out of Egypt. That's why the wilderness time represents the dispensation of the church age right now. 40 years, 40 jubilees. Until we cross over. Our fathers were unwilling to be obedient to him but reputed him and their hearts turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make for us gods who will be before us. For this Moses who led us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to them. I want to, I'm reading out of an NASB. But I'm going to go to my King James back to verse 39. Because that's what I love. This is my passion. And I just started reading it. I, I just, so you catch the, where the word church came from. It came from the children of Israel leaving Egypt. They were called out. The word ecclesia means to be called out of bondage. The feast of freedom. 
verse 30, look at this. This is, this is like, wow. I'm going to read 37 over again in the, in, in, the, in the King James. 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, liken unto me, him shall ye hear. I like this so much more better. Watch this. 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. There was a church in the wilderness. Wow. That's you and me right now. Wow. With the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the living oracles, the lively words to give unto us. Those words that was given was to bring life through the revelation of who Jesus Christ was. That's what he's doing right now. The lively oracles that our fathers had uh, received. That's why Paul said when he was in prison, prison, bring me my cloak, but also the parchments. Most important, important bring me the parchments so I can study them. Because I want to see Jesus. Yes. If you don't believe me, look what Paul says. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go. 1, 2, 3. I'm already there. Stop. I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under a cloud, wow, and all passed through the sea. And they were all baptized unto Moses, wow, in the cloud and in the sea. They was baptized unto Moses. Amen. That sea represented a baptism, right? Yeah. Place of death. Man, Pharaoh died there. Physically, Amen. children of Israel died spiritually and came up on the other side. Amen. Do you know what that was? You know what that was from Egypt to the Red Sea? Was the birthing canal. <laughs> there was in a birthing canal held up at the sea. About to be birthed. They were still in bondage. They thought... Is it important to get in the water? Yes. Why didn't God lead them around the water? Hi. Egypt was the altar. The place of death, blood, straight to the water. They get, listen to this, God brings them through a narrow path, the womb. The birthing place of, of Israel was in the womb of Egypt. They left Egypt and they went between the mountains in a small cavern, a small a valley little area that they couldn't go nowhere. They was in the birthing canal wow. about to come out on the other side when the water just busted open. Wow. <laughs> ah! That's what I'm talking about. The power of the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me Jesus ain't who he says he is. <laughs> it says, and all did eat, and they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea. And they did all eat the same spiritual meat. They're eating the same meat that you and I are eating right now. What meat is that? It ain't the milk, it's the meat. The meat is the word. Jesus Christ, he's the meat, he's the substance, he's the lamb. Wow. And they all did drink the same spiritual drink. For that drink they drank from that was that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, like what, I, like, I like what God told Moses. I like what God told Moses. I'm going to tell you, man, my Lord's bad, son. He's bad. Check this out. We live in a dispensation of grace. Yeah. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses, take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on and holy. And Moses' knees were knocking. Because he's bad, son! He is amazing! But guess what? It wasn't time for grace. And God told him, Don't fool with that angel. 
that's in a front leading you around, that would be Christ, the angel of the Lord. For he will not fool around with you. He will show no mercy on you. He will kill you. That's right. That's right. That's what God said. Don't fool with the angel in the front that's leading you. Because it wasn't time for his grace. <laughs> He's amazing, son. And you're thinking when the angel of the Lord slew, uh, showed up and when they opened up that mercy seat and, 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 and the angel of the Lord slew 85,000. You think, who you think that was? It was a leader of the host of the army of the Lord, son. And when he comes back riding and he on that white horse and he got king of kings and lord of lords and blood on his vesture and his sword out, it's time for payment, right. son. That's my God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Right. He ain't no wimp. Right. Son, full of grace and mercy and truth. That's the one I serve. Hey, I'm on his side. That's my God. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> Man, I just thought I might just go out there a little bit. Now look what I'm telling you. Wow. Look what I'm showing you. Do you see the importance of knowing the old and the new? Amen. You get tired of going to church hearing the same thing over and over and no power is manifested? Because they don't have any power. Because they don't have any word. Because they don't know because nothing could be brought to their remembrance because, hey, they threw out the Old Covenant. They threw out the feasts and the festivals and all of God's Old Covenant Word. And I got Jesus and everything's going to be okay. And they know absolutely nothing. They don't even truly know who He is. They believe they can keep doing the things that they're living in and sinning and doing all, and everything's fine. I'm saved. I agree. <laughs> Man, you, you haven't, you, you ain't got a concept of who He really is. <clears throat> he's full of grace and truth and mercy, and He's just. <clears throat> and sin will be judged at its appointed time. That's why the importance of, like Paul said in 2 Peter, some, you know, does Paul say some things which are hard to be understood and some do wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction? Those that are unlearned and unstable wrestle the scriptures as they do the others, which leads to their own destruction. They like a root, a pig dwelling, going back into its mire, a root plucked up twice. Man, you need to know the word. Amazing. 37, 38. This is the one who is at the congregation in the wilderness. 38. This is the one, this is he, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake unto him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the living oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and their hearts turned back unto Egypt. That's what the children, that's what happened to Jesus. They thrust him out. They wouldn't receive the living oracles. He was the living oracle. He was the word made flesh. Saying unto Aaron, Make unto us gods to go before us. For this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what happened or become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices unto the idol and rejoiced in the work of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Wow, you can't worship the angels. They started worshiping angels. That's what's going on. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? You know what that means? While they were still in the wilderness, they were sacrificing unto idols that they made. They never turned to the Lord with their whole heart. That's why I repented God. And he slew them all in the wilderness. 
I mean, the angel of the Lord is walking with them. They could physically see him. My God, son. To bust the Red Sea open seven miles across a thousand foot deep and to walk through on dry land and want to go back to an idol-making place? My God, son! What was shown unto them was absolutely amazing. That's why the Bible says a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh for a sign. Oh Jesus, what sign will you show us? He done showed you, the Bible says, if all the miracles that Jesus did, they couldn't even be contained in a books. They couldn't even be contained in books, all the miracles, they, but they wanted another sign. They wanted another sign. But no sign shall be given but the death, bell, and resurrection, Jonah, in the belly of the whale. Thank you, brother. Uh, this is just a warm-up. I'm almost done. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Verse 42. Then God turned and gave them up to worship of the host of heaven that is written in the book of the prophets. Verse 43. You took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your God, Rephim, figures which ye made to worship them. Then I will carry you uh, away beyond Babylon. Now, wow, man. Wow. They ain't even become a people yet. I mean, there are people, but they haven't even inherited the land that flows with milk and honey, and God's already prophesying to them that Babylon is going to take them captivity. They're still worshiping face in the east, the sun god. Ra! Rephim! Wow! Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. That's what a tabernacle is. That's you and me. We're to be a witness of who Jesus Christ is. We are a tabernacle of testimony. A tabernacle of witness. Wow. I am crazy for Jesus. Because I beheld his glory. And let me tell you something, it was weighty, and I was on the ground when he began to reveal himself to me. Our fathers had the tabernacle in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came, uh, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles. Let me we'll go back and read this which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles uh, that's Joshua huh? and drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build for me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked, and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the holy ghost <gasps> wait what did you say there you always do resist the Holy Ghost mm. how do they resist the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost empowers you to know who Jesus is now we know what the Holy Ghost is you do resist the Holy Ghost because he's the one that empowers you to know him, but you won't receive him. So you're resisting right now the very words that I'm speaking to you by the power of the Holy Ghost to reveal unto you who Jesus is, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. By the power of the Holy Ghost is being manifested who Jesus Christ is and you still reject him as you did to, as the fathers, your fathers did. 
You are no different than them. And it says they were pricked in their heart by the power of the Holy Spirit and they wanted him silenced. Yeah. They couldn't contend with that. Too much power. Too weighty. Too much weight. So they leaped on him. They leaped on him. And he said, they began to throw stones at him. They picked up stones to stone him. Paul standing right there, hearing everything that Stephen said. Then he says something that's so absolutely mind-blowing. After revealing Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, he says, I see Him. Yeah. What? My God. That's what the glory of the Lord is. To be able to see Him. Now He's seeing Him with His physical eyes. The one He's been serving with His heart and His spirit. And they were so pricked in their spirits and wanted a sign that they jumped on him and started eating on him like zombies. Yeah. They gnawed on him with their teeth. And he said, forgive them, Father. My God, son. My God. You got to be pretty mad to jump on somebody and start biting them. Yeah. Shut up! They were pricked in their heart. They knew. He took them through the Tanakh, through their writings, and proved beyond the shadow of a doubt Jesus was who he says he was. What? Paul standing there holding their clothes, or their clothes that had picked up the stone, you see, because they had to take their wraps off. Yeah. And they laid their shawls, their prayer shawls, which represents the law, because that's who they were. And they picked up stones, because the law is written in stone, to stone them. And they began to hum the stones at him. And he said, I see Jesus high and lifted up. Isaiah 6, sitting beside the throne. And the stones wouldn't silence him. It says in the crowd ran at him. Started biting him. Man. You got a picture now? It ain't a Bible story. It's reality. You better know him. Serious. You need to know him. You need to have that experience with him. Yeah. I'm just about finished. Mm. Yeah, yes. Yes. That's exactly right. If we don't bear witness, that's right. When they said, when Jesus was riding in on a feast, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, they were saying, shut up, don't say that. He said, if I silence them, the stones would cry out. Why? Because the law was written in stone. It would bear witness. That's what it is. You know what? I think I went far enough. There's only a few more verses. And if I start reading, I'm going to just keep breaking this thing down even further. And keep bringing you over and connecting dots for you. We, next week, are going to open up Exodus chapter 1. And we're going to go through it and we're going to read it. We're going to start reading through Exodus. Man. 
I'm going to show you. We're going to, by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, you're going to see things that you've never seen before. I guarantee it. You're going to see the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're going to see Him in His first coming, and you're going to see Him in His second coming. You're going to see Satan destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see the mark of the beast in 666 and all kind of things. Wow. We are really, we're going to go deep. And just to let you know, the Red Sea, which is the Gulf of Agaba, is about five to 6,000 feet deep. But right where the, the peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula, where Solomon had marked it with two columns, there's a ridge that crosses right there, a levee, that comes all the way up to about a, a, it's a thousand foot below the water. One thousand feet below the water. When God parted the Red Sea, there was a, a, there was a waterway by the Spirit, a strong east wind blew all night, we'll get into that later. It says, a strong east wind blew all night and parted the waters, opens the waters, makes the way, that's the Spirit. Watch this. The Word of God is the waters, and He's the one that parts them and opens it to make a way where there seems to be no way. Ah. When they walked through that wall, when they walked on side of it, can you imagine looking up and a wall of water? was 1,000 feet straight up. My God, son. And they walked across on dry land. Pharaoh made a big mistake. He tried to follow them through that word. That Red Sea. The Gulf of Agaba. And found, well, We'll just get into that later. Let's pray. I know as, as your pastor, I get crazy. And I holler and scream. But man, I can't help it. Because he is so absolutely amazing. God absolutely done blew all my windows out. And my doors and my hood. He's ripped out the carpet and gutted me down to, I mean, even stripped the paint off and put me back in a molten pot. Man, when you begin to see Him, but you have to be a student of the Word. You have to read His Word. And I know it's hard with the flesh. I know it's hard, but I want to help you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, you, Your Word says, Your Word says, and I pray that for every person. I'm going to pray something for every person in this room today. Yes. Father, what was spoken today, yes. Your Word says that it will accomplish everything it's been set forth to do. Yes. Your word. Yes. I pray today that every person in this room, from the youngest to the oldest, yes. well, Lord, will even become more crazier than me for you. <coughs> that the word of God would go in and transform their life. That yes. they will not end up in hell, Father. Yes. But Lord will become mighty <coughs> through the power of the Holy Spirit for the testimony yes, of Jesus Christ. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that everybody in here, <coughs> I'll see them on the other side. Yes. And you, Father, are faithful to complete what you've begun. Today, yes. let it be a new beginning in these lives. Whether... They think they received it or not, Lord. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I know, Father, that it went in. <coughs> and Father, I pray right now that you would send laborers and waterers. Just one little thing that might have been said 
yes. would water that seed, the seeds, Father. To, you, Lord, you know today, I told my son, I'm going home to plant in my garden today. I told my son, I didn't even, and it, it, you are so amazing, Father. And Father, the seeds of your word that was sown today, I pray that every ground in here, there's four different kind of dirts, Lord. That every piece of dirt and land that's in here yes. is all the land, the good dirt that'll bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yes, yes. And Lord, I know that we're all dirt bags. We're all dirt bags, Father. I even told Bob Biner he was a dirt bag. Adam was a dirt bag, Lord. You made a dirt bag. But then you put your spirit in him and he become a living soul. Yes. So I pray your Holy Spirit yes. and these seeds that were sown today would go in these bunch of dirt bags, Lord, <laughs> and turn them into who you want them to be. In Jesus' yes. name, amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen.